shall we start the next session? Our idea was to bring as many recipients as possible together so that um, the delegates or participants can have direct conversation with them and ask them questions. As we are running against time, let's see how much we can accomplish that. But then, in any case, they are there. You can always catch up with them with more questions. So, Caroline is going to chair this session, and she will introduce the uh, panelists. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Cognizant of the time and the fact that people must be tired after three days of rigorous engagement, we are pleased to bring to you a session that will connect us with the emotions of basic income. Mm -hmm. And that is listening to the stories of basic income recipients from across the globe. Today's session will feature basic income recipients from Africa, Europe, Canada, and Asia. We've tried our best to bring uh, people from different countries. We have with us JC Golem from Canada's um, basic income experiment in Ontario. We also have Magu Ben from the Indian basic income experiment that we've been talking about since we started. We have Dennis Anam Oteno from the basic income experiment in Kenya. We have Radha Davar, basic income experiment in India. And finally, we have Sabine Heisner from Germany. This session will not give us the solutions to all the questions we've been asking about basic income, but it will give us the experiences of people from different geographies as a proof that poverty is no respecter of persons or geographies, whether you're from a developed country or from a developing country. We are going to listen to how basic income has impacted different sectors that people globally care about, and that will range from health, education, food and nutrition, gender relations, work, risk-taking behavior, planning and saving, family, and all those that we have. We will have five minutes for each of the uh, presenters who will tell us personal experiences, community experiences since they received the basic income um, support. After that, we will open the floor for us to ask questions to the recipients in case there's anything that is not clear. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite JC Golem to give us her perspective of basic income from Ontario. Thank you. Thank you so much, Caroline. And um, I can't overstate this. It's a tremendous honor and a tremendous pleasure to be here and to represent Ontario and Canada and all my friends who are on the basic income pilot. I want to share my story, but then I also have managed to get some portraits here. So I will like to share some of their stories as well. Um, I have said this story before, and I'm sure some of you may know this, but before receiving a basic income, I had four jobs. Um, and I was working nonstop, day in and day out. Um, I never had time to go home from dinner. And despite Despite working four jobs, all of these jobs were minimum wage, gig jobs, very precarious employment, and I was still poor at the end of this. I was still stressed, I was still poor, living in poverty, and the toll on my mental health was just devastating. And all of this was just in an effort to try and build my photography business, which I wasn't able to build because I was so busy working. Um, but then I got a basic income. Ontario did a pilot, they selected four cities, mine was one of the cities, and somehow I won the lottery and I got a basic income. My first and most visceral reaction was just the relief that I felt with the knowledge that my rent would be covered every month and that I would be able to drop down these jobs. I'd be able to focus on my dreams. I would be able to build my business and I would be able to do the thing I've always wanted to do, which is just to be a full-time photographer. But then a new government came in and they canceled the pilot. They did this abruptly. They made election promises to not cancel the pilot. And then without even waiting a month after getting elected, they canceled it without any discernment reason whatsoever, throwing all of our lives into chaos and infuriating everybody in Ontario. So hell hath no fury. 
and fury is what motivated my portrait series, and that is why I, that is what happened. I did not expect to be here. I expected my portrait series would make an impact, last a couple of weeks, and then I would move on and m get back to my normal life. But here I am today, over a year after Humans of Basic Income was born, here in India, sharing my stories and sharing the stories of people in Ontario with some of the experts around the world on basic income, and it's just a tremendous honor. So without further ado, I would like to share some of those stories. Can we pull up the folder? Okay, so the first story I would like to share, um, can you pull up the picture of Dan and Justine? Dan and Justine, they're great friends of mine actually. I've known them for years. I had no idea that they were on a basic income until the, after the cancellation because they were so ashamed of telling anybody. They didn't want to have face the stigma of being in poverty. But then when I started the portrait series, they came forward to me and said, we need to tell our story. In this picture, Justine is pregnant. They were living in a neighborhood where there was frequent drug dealing and gang violence happening in their alleyway and their daughter couldn't be able to play outside. They used basic income to move into safer housing. So now their daughter, just, uh, daughter Julia and now their newborn son Orion are in a safe environment and are able to play outside and it's because of basic income. Let's pull up the picture of Tessa. I met Tessa. She lives in the city of Thunder Bay, Ontario, which is a remote northern community. Um, Tessa is blind. The caption there says, basic income means I can pay my guide dog's medical bills. ODSP, Ontario Disability Support, does not have a drug plan for service animals. $250 a month for meds, meds, never mind vet costs. The option was to give her back and the school would adopt her out. Basic income has allowed me to keep her and my independence. That's not her pet. That's her guide dog. And I remember after taking that picture, I was back home, I was editing these photos, and when I got to this photo, I had a panic attack because she's not losing just her pet, she's losing her tool for accessibility. Let's pull up the picture of Sarah. Basic income alleviated my stress. My income wasn't enough each month. I am precariously employed. I'm a full-time student and a beginning manual therapist in my community. Sarah's also a very good friend of mine. I only found out she was on basic income weeks before the cancellation. She was working a dangerous job as a bartender, working all night and into the middle of the night, um, and then waking up early, early, early in the morning to go back to school and study, study, study. So she was able to use basic income to pay for her schooling, and now she's a full-time osteopathic doctor in our community. And last but not least, let's pull up the picture of Roland. Basic income has helped me achieve my goal of graduating from college. It's helped me by going through school with a lot less stress. I'm achieving my goals for successful. I'm very thankful and grateful for the big basic income project, MIGWITCH, which means thank you in an indigenous language. Roland is indigenous and Canada has a systemic, systemic problem with our indigenous population. They are affected by poverty and racism on a national wide scale level. Um, Roland was suffering from homelessness and addiction and basic income allowed him to find a home, go back to school, and move on. I cannot, I cannot overstate the power of storytelling to affect change. And this movement, now we have stories in this movement, and that is a very, very powerful thing. We're now closer to a basic income than ever before, and I've heard many people at the, uh, over this weekend remark that we're at a conference now where we now have basic income recipients, and that hasn't happened in the past. So I look forward now to the next BIEN conferences where we have permanent basic income programs, and we're talking about them and we have more and more and more recipients. What we are doing here, my friends, is we are building a better world. And because of the work that we are doing here now, because of these conversations and the connections that we are making, that better world feels closer than ever before. Thank you. Thank you, JC. That's um, a very moving story. And I think um, listening to what is happening in Ontario really humbles me when I think about basic income back home and seeing how different people's plights um, you know, are, but how the final impact is actually the same. Dignity, respect, and choice cuts across the globe. With that, I'd like to invite Dennis to give us uh, his story from Kenya. Thank you so much. It's such an honor for family of uh, UBL to invite me here to say a few things over the same. A uh, question was asked uh, to the floor and would ask uh, why are we here? To give you the naked truth, 
of UBI. And uh, uh, Madam Caro, I, I wish you'd given me uh, much more time because five minutes is too little to give emotional uh, thing on behalf of entire Africa. Anyway, I'll, I'll try and obey, obey uh, as I've been, I've been told. I started receiving uh, cash transfer for the last three years. And uh, it's a monthly transfer that get directly to my mobile phone and transactions is being done without going to the bank. The NGO that started, started this thing in our, in, our, in our community is known as Give Direct. And uh, I would say that for them to be accepted in that community, in that location, it wasn't that easy task. Why? Because people believed, we believed, that nobody would come from nowhere and start giving you money without you asking. So uh, we thought that, some of us thought that uh, this money is coming from religion of doom. And m most of them try to shy off um, from this kind of thing. Uh, I want to tell you that I, I, we normally receive 2,200. Uh, That's equivalent to 2,000. Uh, equivalent to $22 a month. In a year, if you calculate that figure, it, it comes to 27360 which is equivalent to two, $273. You can multiply that throughout the, uh, the years. Uh, I've received that money for three years, and there's nine more years coming. Now, very quickly, I want to address seven points that carries across politically, economically, and socially across the board on how UBL has changed the life of people in my community. One, I want to address war on empowerment, better health, government impl implementation in law, on, on, on law and order, attitude towards UBL, other transfers, and by that, by that I mean other foundations that do the same, and generally, I want to give, I want to give a general ob observation toward the same. As you know, all know that uh, most countries in Africa, they're developing countries, and challenges of developing countries are uh, quite the same. There's unemployment, corruption, poor health, you know, poor uh, uh, sanitation, and so on and so forth. Now, when this, uh, when this, uh, child called the UBL came to the village. There's a group of people that indeed was, were empowered, and these were women, starting from my wife. Most women were not given a chance to express their feelings, to plan, and in fact to give decision. In the, uh, into, uh, were not even given a chance to decide in the society. When UBL came into the system, we started seeing women being liberated. We started having debates with them. They could give their ideas. And their opinion were being accepted. So it is a really uh, a great change to women of that village. There's also better health that uh, has been seen growing gradually once since it, the, this, born, this, this child was born on, uh, in, in, the, in the village. So now that you see uh, people attending, table health, in the sense that people can afford uh, to go to hostels, which was an, uh, something that not, was not common before. When you talk about government implementation, there was a lot of crime rate in the, in the, in the village. A lot of selling people from, 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 uh, uh, from neighborhood, house breaking, and so on and so forth. It is now three years down the line. The crime rate is declining. Why? Because Everybody has got something basic to meet uh, their own need. And uh, the administration, local administration, they have lesser work nowadays. They're not even bothered because there's not much time to waste uh, mediating or, 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 or listening to cases that are of, 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 um, of such offenses, I mean, of stealing and so on and so, on and so forth. There is a, 
a great change, uh, a great uh, change in uh, attitude towards the UBL. The attitude towards UBL has changed. People have started accepting UBL in the society. Remember I said that. One, uh, when when Give Direct came into that uh, community, it was seen as a, a religion of doom trying to expand their, their work. But that is not the, the thing. People have, uh, it has been confirmed that they meant, they, they meant well for everybody because we have seen people going out to look for, look for work. I am an example. Uh, when, when I started to see this money, I, I'd know I, was, I was jobless. Six months down the line, I got a job. How? There was some small money to plan to leave, leave behind there was some, uh, for the family to use and also some money to make applications in different farms. I was lucky to get one. And the same thing is happening to almost everybody in the village. They're trying to look for a better job. So when they are saying that uh, it's from a region of doom, it has been confirmed to them that it is not the case. When you say that if you give them uh, money, they will not work, it is not true. In fact, it encourages them to work harder. And if at all you want, uh, you want, this, uh, you want to empower a community, and most of women, it has been confirmed to us, the way our ladies handle this cash, in fact, they do it in a better way than men. We've seen them pay school fees for the uh, common, common things that are required in school, buying learning materials in school, even hiring teachers. Because, you know, government is unable to employ enough teachers to meet the demand of, the gro uh, demand of growing population. So, women in that community have formed a group. They pay some, uh, some money and hire more teachers. So, UBL is a, is a, Sorry, a good to child to Dennis. give a chance. I would, I would speak and I would have talk, talk a lot, uh, Caro. Uh, but there's no time. Yes. We can speak later. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. I knew this. I was getting real worried about Dennis because I have been seeing him writing since we came from Kenya. The stories of UBI are not finishable. If there is any word like that, they are endless. Dennis, thank you so much. We invite Sabine. I'm from Germany. I'm from Munich. Uh, I say hello to everyone here. I'm quite long with, um, connected with the UBI because I'm doing it since 2008. I would like to do a very short history of this experiment I will tell you right now. In Germany, the UBI is discussed for quite a while. In Berlin was a young guy and when he came along with this vision, he really decided to give people by himself, by his NGO, the UBI. And he founded, together with Johannes, who is just walking around, <laughs> the NGO meingrundeinkommen.de. On this platform, you can, via internet, donate money. Or you don't donate, but you can get the UBI. And it's completely unconditional because no one is asking you something. So if you have to donate, no, they decided to give the people a thousand euro, which is um, discussed in Europe for a long, long while. And they will give it to you one year. So they have to fund 12,000 euros for just one person. And this experiment raised so but very, very fast that we have within four years more than 350 people getting this thousand euros a month. And I'm the, one of these lucky people. Wanted in January this year, so I'll be finished by December. What has this happened to me? What does it really do to me? Well, they long to this question, uh, what would you do if you're income would be taken care of. I am not familiar with this question. Because I think that's not the question, it's not the money, it's the feeling, it's the emotion you get out of this indulging someone. I indulge you, I indulge you, and you indulge me. That's the point. And I think 
realizing this point to me, even if I'm so long in this, uh, in this UVI scene, it made me really lucky and I became a joyful person. So I thought of this joyful person. If we all become really joyful in the world, what would we do? We will change the nature. We don't have any more fireworks, fires somewhere in the um, South America. We won't have any wars anymore. We don't need it. What we need is really this knowing of indulging. And for, to me, it's a really main point. It's not the money. I can get from you 500 euros. I, can live, I can't live on that. I know that. I can't really live on 1,000 euros in Munich. You have to work on top. Well, I'm the lucky one, I get a pension. But this is so low that I'm really lucky to have this thousand months per month right now. So it'll change in January again, of course. But then I'll start to move on. I, today I was asked if I can do this um, within this, uh, I don't know how it is called, to make this European uh, questions where you have to get signings to get it into the European Parliament. So I'll move on that. That's my, I think that's my thing to do right now in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sabine. Um, that's the story from Germany. It's the same story of emancipation and freedom. We have our last two presenters from India. They will speak in their local language and Sarath will help with translations. So we invite Manguben to come first. Sabiko mera namaste. Me Gram Mali Burde Sai Hu. Seva Mat Burde Seva Sangetan Hamarahe. Or MP Sai Ham. Oh, good pace. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am from a village called Mali Badodia. I am a member or uh, leader of uh, Seva Madhya Pradesh. Of good pace, Mille Se. हमको बहुत फायदा हुआ था और क्योंकि हम पहले लोग दूसरे से कर्ज से बच गए थे और अभी जैसे हमको मोटर खरीदा था घर के लिए हमने खुद ने और खेती की सिंचाई घर की खेती अच्छे से कर लेते थे और अभी हमारा थोड़ा अच्छा रोजगार घर का चलने लग गया नहीं तो पहले हालत बुरी खराब थी उसके बाद वो हमने गांव के ने भी कोई ने किसी ने भेंस ले रोजगार के लिए किसी ने बकरी खरीदी इन आवर फैमिली वी इज टू Together, we are a joint family. All of us together used to get about 5,000 rupees. And uh, we have a farm. Uh, so with that money, we saved for three months and bought a motor to, for, the, for irrigation. And uh, because of that, we, uh, we didn't have to borrow money to uh, get water. Oh, उसको आज भी अभी हमारा बहुत गरीब हालत है अभी लोगों के हकीकत पे सीधा पैसा सोच लेने के लिए बहुत बोलते हैं हमको बोलते हैं कि आप तुम्हारे अपने सेवा से कभी और मिले बुजुर्ग इंसान तो हमको कुछ सहारा मिले दवे गोले का और अभी पहले जैसे रोजगार से लग गए लोग पहले था नहीं दूसरे के खेती मजदूरी करने जाते थे और अभी बहुत सारे छोटे-छोटे दुकान डाल ले दो विकलांग है हमारे गांव में उन दोनों दो बच्चे हैं उनके दो चारी के व्यक्ति के पैसे भेले करके मशीन खरीदी तो उनका रोजगार चला रहे हैं चारी वाले के। So this kind of uh, having cash in hand has been extremely important because uh, most of the time we wouldn't have cash and we used to borrow. But uh, lot of people earlier they were not cultivating their land, but this has enabled many families to start cultivating and many st people started opening small shops to sell groceries and small items. And in one of the shops in her village, they have, uh, there's a couple which is a disabled couple. Both of them are uh, disabled, physically challenged. So they run a small grocery. So with, they pooled the money for six months and bought a refrigerator so that they can stock more things to sell in the village. और उसके बाद जो कि जैसे कि हमको जैसे रोजगार मजदूरी करने के लिए जाते थे बच्चे की पढ़ाई नहीं करवा सकते थे तो उसके बाद में हमें पैसे मिलने लगा तो हमने खुद ने लड़के की ग्यारहवीं पास करे साइकिल खरीदा बारह किलोमीटर दूर गांव से पढ़ने जाते थे तो हमने पढ़ाई भी करवाई और स्वास्थ्य के लिए भी हमारा अच्छा चलता था 
So, uh, in our family, another important thing that happened during this entire period of 18 months was that my daughter, after she completed uh, uh, 10th class, she had to go to another village to, for, to continuing her studies. So, I, we bought a cycle and she was able to go to other village every day to continue her studies and she continued and uh, completed her 12th standard as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Monk Ben. Um, story from India. And there is more from India. We invite Radha Davar to also give us her story. Sabko namaste. Mera naam Radha Davar hai. Gaon to bohut dur hai. Bilkul andar hai wo baad. Goda khurde gaon. My name is Radha and our village is very far away from any town. We are 60 kilometers away from the nearest town. Pehle kya hai ki itni samay se aati dikkat itni thi ki koi gaon mein कोई भी अधिकार आने की इच्छा नहीं करते थे गांव में हमारी भी बहुत स्थिति खराब थी क्योंकि जमीन है जमीन है लेकिन विकास लिए खाद बीज नहीं रहते थे रहते लाते थे दूसरे से सरकार से लाते थे खाद बीज सो आवर विलेज वाज सो फार रिमूव्ड इट वाज दैट नो गवर्नमेंट पीपल वुड लाइक टू कम देयर टू � now, once this thing came, I think even government people started coming to the villages and um, uh, we, had, we have land, you know, all of us in our village have land uh, because they are from a tribe called uh, Bill tribes. So, but then because it is so expensive to buy seeds and uh, fertilizer, many of us could not actually cultivate that land because in order to get the seed and the fertilizer, the whole idea was what to get um, borrow from the money lender, which was at a very high interest rate. So, if I got money in the village, I got my own money. 1200 rupees. A month, 1200 rupees. So, we said that they had to take some money. We 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 had to take some money. जमीन का लिए और दो बकरी खरीदी तो बकरी मैंने लिए वो बकरी करी है तेईस बकरी कर ली इसकी मैंने। So our entire family we received about twelve hundred rupees and we put it all together over months we bought two buffaloes and five goats। वो बात मजदूरी पे भी बहुत जाते थे हम पहले भी मजदूरी जाते थे मेरे और पति भी और मैं भी दोनों ईट भट्टे का काम करते हैं और अभी ईट भट्टे का काम छोड़ दिया अभी खेती में काम करने लगी। So we used to or the entire family we used to go to the brick kiln where we used to stay there and work so 15 hours a day the entire family used to work there and but then once this cash started coming into our house we started rethinking about whether we should continue that kind of work or not. So gradually, first I came away, then my children came away, and uh, within a year, even my husband didn't want to continue that work. Or bell, khud ka bhi kam kar lete, or bahar bhi dusra ka bhi de de de, to 500 rupees roz se bell ki bhi majduri ka kam, wo bhi bell bhi chalta, or khud bhi kar lete ham. So one khet mein kam kare. One bull that they bought, I think it was actually one buffalo and one bull. So bull that they bought, they also started giving it out on rent to other people in the villages. So that also started giving us some small income. और गांव में भी बहनों ने कोई न सिलाई मशीन खरीदी, कोई न बेंच खरीदी, तो वो इनके मावा के काम चल रहा है, दुकान भी डाल ली कोई बहन ने, और कोई न वो मैजिक हमारे गांव में मैजिक नहीं चलती थी, और बाइक वाइक भी नहीं चलते थे, तो वो पैसे मिलने के बाद में वो बाइक भी चलने लगी और मैजिक so, uh, in the village, she said that suddenly small little shops started coming, many people started opening small shops and also um, with the milk, they started, maybe you saw in the video, started making the condensed milk to sell in the market. So, we think that sometimes we think that it can happen, sometimes it can happen, और अमदानी आगे बढ़ सकती। So if when we get cash in our hand, it actually changes our life. We hope that in future this kind of a policy will come in our country.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I think we don't have to belabor the point that everybody has an answer. UBI offers an answer to everyone, a bureaucrat, a politician, a teacher, a doctor. If you're asking for why are they come, not coming to my hospital, UBI will bring them to the hospital. It will bring them to the schools. It will reduce crime rate. Every sector is taken care of. Water and sanitation, agriculture, um, management of debt, household peace. We cannot say enough. The stories I hear across this board, this table, tells you how individualistic issues are that we can't define the problems of everybody. And that is why at Give Directly we have one video called Not Everybody Needs a Goat. You do not go into a community and buy thousands of goats, stack them in a lorry and take them to a village. Not everybody needs a goat. Give them money to decide what they want to do. We are offering an opportunity <laughs> for us to ask questions to the recipients and we are going to give a chance to three people. This is a question for uh, Jesse. Jesse, what do you have to do to apply to become part of the program? This question is for Indian people. What is the impact? Is there any impact on dis distress migration? Distress migration. In Canada, how long the program run? And that is, thank you. Who are you directing the question to, sir? India. India? If uh, the panelists, when it's applicable, if, whether they can address the, the question as to the impact following the end of the pilot. Um, so w how was it sustainable? What, what were they able to continue to do after the end of the pilot? Question directed to India? Um, maybe, um, yes, and Canada. So we have questions. Uh, JC, you will take two questions. And then um, we will give India same two questions also to answer. Um, for starters, how did I apply? Um, so the basic income program, um, it was a rolling out process. Um, I honestly, I was just browsing Facebook and I saw a CBC News article, um, the Canadian Broadcasting, that said that they were having the pilot, that, that Hamilton was one of the cities, the criteria was at, that you had to be low income, which in Canada means that you're making less than $30,000 a year. So when I saw it, I was just like, hey, this is awesome, I, I, I qualify, like free money from the government, like sign me up. So um, you had to attend an information session. Um, it was actually kind of difficult to get the information to go to those sessions, but I was able to get it go to a session and then it was a random lottery. So in total, 4,500 people were selected to be on basic income in, in those four cities. Um, and then the other people that um, had applied but weren't selected were gonna be in the control group and then they would do surveys um, to, to see like what your life is like on or not on basic income. So I ended up being one of the 4,500 people. Um, and then the other question, um, what were people able to continue to do after the pilot? Um, it's, um, it's a little bit of a mix, like um, a lot of people were able to um, like get their lives started. Like, you know, my friend Sarah, who's now a doctor, uh, my friends who li now live in safer housing. Um, but then I'm not going to lie, um, a, a lot of people um, ha are, a lot of people did not fare so well. Um, I'm definitely one of the lucky ones. Um, a lot of people, um, and who are my friends, um, they're lives were thrown into chaos and some of them have ended up worse off than before they were on basic income and back into poverty in worse circumstances. So it's, it's very difficult to see and it's something I'm still very much struggling with. So. मतलब वो पहले ज्यादा चाहते थे मजदूरी पे अब वो पैसे दिए के बाद में क्योंकि फसल है तो वो खेती है तो खेती में ज्यादा काम करने लग गया मजदूरी जानो थोड़ा कम होने लगी सो इट डेफिनेटली हैड एन इंपैक्ट ऑन माय माइग्रेशन बिकॉज़ आई थिंक द पीपल हैव बिगन टू कल्टीवेट देयर ओन लैंड्स अ लिटिल मोर एंड स्पेंडिंग लेट मी आल्सो ऐड दैट इन आवर स्टडी वन ऑफ द फाइंडिंग्स वाज दैट uh, when we asked in the beginning that what is your main occupation, I think more people uh, said that their primary occupation is as wage laborer. And then at the end of the study, in the after the final, uh, this uh, it actually it got reversed. 
that more people said that my primary occupation is I'm, I'm a farmer. अच्छा ये काम जब आपका बारह महीने का खत्म हो गया तो क्या आपको उससे क्या तकलीफ हुआ जब आपका पैसा मिलना बंद हो गया पैसा मिलना मिलना बंद हो गया तो वो वापस कोई बच्चे की पढ़ाई कर लिए कोई खेती खाद बीज कर लिए वापस मजदूरी जाने लग गया we went back to become, we went back to what we were doing earlier uh, by and large but in our legacy we did a legacy study after four years so where say that certain things continued and certain things kind of stopped ye aapke gaon mein palayan ka zyada hua kam hua is 18 mahine ki wajah se palayan wo aisa hua na abhi jaise pehle wo paise milne se thoda kam ho gaya tha aur abhi jaise kheti thoda acche se beej hai khad hai pani wo kheti mein kar lete the bacche ki padhai swasth ke liye और अभी जैसे पहले से थोड़ा हुआ तो है कम मजदूरी पहले से थोड़ा अपने अपने धंधे पे लग गए जैसे बाहर जाते थे वो कम हो गया तो अभी मजदूरी तो कर रहे हैं अभी पहले हालत ज्यादा अभी शी सेज दैट पीपल आर स्टिल गोइंग आउट फॉर वेज लेबर बट द परसेंटेज ऑफ दैट हैज रिड्यूस बिकॉज दे आर स्पेंडिंग अ लिटिल मोर टाइम ऑन देयर ओन फार्म्स थैंक यू एंड ऑन माइग्रेशन मे बी डेनिस डू यू वांट टू से समथिंग अबाउट your community have you seen any effects of migration uh, with the basic income do you see people leaving your villages to go elsewhere and why thank you very much karo um i've seen so many people leave villages uh, to look for, to go and look for work um some also go and go for better businesses uh, as in they found out that uh, being in the villages being uh, is just doing them harm than good so many have gone out to look for job I am an example and so so many and I believe this thing is happening across 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 Africa. We're going to the second set of questions. Can we see hands for next three questions? Anybody with a question for the recipients? We have the lady at the back. Okay. So thank you very much to all of the panelists for your interventions. I would like to ask a question related to what happens um after the pilots, uh, so following from Diane's uh, point. Yesterday there was a discussion about what can be done once the pilot ends to like, help the recipients. Um, so my question goes uh, to all of the panel members. What uh, would you feel you need or you would like to have like, once the pilot ends uh, uh, to support you in general. And especially related to um, uh, some points that Jesse mentioned. So the fact that some people couldn't, um, for whatever reason, couldn't uh, kind of uh, improve their situations. And, you know, this can have a, a really worse impact for, for anxiety and many other factors. So what can be done, you know, within all these pilots that are being carried uh, out and are still being designed that can help recipients after the pilot. Thank you. Yeah, could, could any of the panelists explain the reaction of neighbors or work colleagues who do not get the basic income? Thank you. What happens to the neighbors who did not benefit from the grants? Yeah, a question just about freedom, really. Um, could any of the panelists say how, or how they understand freedom and to what extent did the receipt of basic income increase their experience of freedom? I'm particularly thinking in terms of time, use, work decisions, but really in any way, uh, concretely. Thank you. We are going to take those three questions. And um, the first question, we will give it to Sabine. We will give the second question on neighbors to India. And we will give the third question on freedom to Jesse. If I understood right, you were asking by ending the, our experiment. Well, it, it's an open source. Uh, I think it will be ending only if the people don't donate anymore. Because everyone can donate. Everyone can get out of this money the UBI. And it's absolutely unconditional. And I think this unconditional makes it such an open source. If you get aware of this unconditional once, pretty sure that the people will indulge everybody for a long while. Thank you. 
Thank you, Sabine. That is the situation in Germany. I think I would like to indulge the panelists a little further. And Dennis, for your community, you're sure after 12 years, you're not going to have any more money from Give Directly. I'm thinking about would your situation be different from Sabine's and how would that be? Thank you. Uh, I would say that uh, we are aware that we are receiving this money for 12 years. And uh, the community is prepared very well. Uh, I've seen people making some small forests, forests, forests that will take care of their, maybe the school fees on, on, on they'll, they'll be selling these trees for, uh, for their own income. We've seen people um, uh, start businesses. So we are prepared psychologically, morally, for the end of this. So that we, uh, we, we, we if it ends at, uh, after 12 years, 12 years, we shall keep on uh, living to the better standard than uh, we were before. Just a quick comment about Ontario and um, post basic income. So when we had signed up, we were under the understanding that it was going to be a three year pilot. So everybody was with that understanding that was made very clear to us and that is what was on the contract that we signed in good faith. So the reason why people are in Ontario are suffering is because it was cut off so abruptly and so shortly. So people signed leases onto houses, paid tuitions for schools that now they can no longer afford and that's why they're suffering. Um, it's the abrupt cancellation. If we had the three years and we were able to see it through all the way to the end, people would have had those plans. I had plans and people would have been able to plan accordingly. And then freedom. Um, freedom, um, I, I saw that in my own life, especially because like I was trapped in those four jobs, just trying to make enough to survive. And then being trapped there meant that my income was trapped in this one small place where it wasn't enough money to live. And I was just stuck doing work that I didn't find meaningful or enjoy in this constant stress. So with basic income, um, I dropped down and just focused exclusively on my photography business. And then with that, I had more time to put in my photography. And then beyond that, I was not only seeing my business grow, I was making more money off of it. So then I was being able to market myself, book clients, book photo shoots, and, and watch my business grow and expand. And I had a plan to not stay on basic income for the full three years. It would have been by this time, had basic income continued, I'd still, I would be a full-time photographer by now um, had it continued. So um, I saw that sort of freedom, especially in my own life, and seeing that I was able to really pursue my dreams and really do the things I want to do and have the time and the, um, the cushion of the safety net of the basic income to be able to do that. Thank you, JC. And for India, on neighbors and how they feel about the basic income. Yeah, the answer is very easy because everybody in the village got it. So there was no question of neighbors not, not getting it. Maybe the neighboring villages uh, were there, about five kilometers away. Uh, they were just, they were saying, uh, I mean, whenever we uh, went to them, went to those villages, they just said that, why don't you bring this program to our village also? But there was no hostility as such. There was envy, but they, they didn't manifest in kind of hostility. But I just want to quickly, very brief responses to the question Neil asked. Uh, what she was referring to, the, the kind of employment in the brick kiln, usually how it happens is that they take uh, an advance in the beginning of the year, and then they go back to the brick kiln, stay there like a slave, the entire family, and then repay the loan through their labor. So I think moving up, there is always a desire to move away from that kind of thing. So what happened was gradually moving away from, so those very minor uh, shifts that happen, which uh, actually have a very large impact. On this question of what happened, how to support the community after the, the yeah, the village uh, people after the wild uh, pilots was over, the village people asked Seva, because Seva was working in those villages, they asked Seva that please try to give us normal loans, because if you don't give us loans, we will go back to the money lenders, and the whole progress that we made, not going them to them, will be completely lost. So Seva continued, even now continues to give them small loans at the time of sowing, at the time of... Um, uh, when they have to put fertilizer and pr property, so that 
the in the agricultural cycle they don't miss out doing what they have to do thank you thank you um we are giving our last uh, chance to eduardo um i see a hand up there i'm strained on time please keep your question very brief here we have i would uh, like to know how the relationship between the ladies in of India uh, changed with respect to their husbands. What kind of change it happened, and well, if the experience of the basic income has stopped, what has happened after that? Yeah, thank you. Short question um, at the my, my ground income, my basic income campaign. We often get the report that because it's only one year, even after this one year, at least you said it, Caroline, there's dignity and, and what did you say, respect and choices that you gain from UBI and at least two of them, the dignity and the respect stay even when the payment is no longer done. So on the panel are several people who don't get the payment anymore. Did you have the same experience? Did dignity and respect or even other things, seeing more choices, uh, stay even when there was no payment anymore? Thank you, Johannes. So we'll have the ladies from India answering questions about relationships within the family spousal relationship. And because we have only JC, who is a beneficiary of a program that has ended, she's going to tell us about dignity, respect, as a result of after the end of the basic income. India, do you want to come first? पहले पैसा नहीं मिला था नहीं तो क्योंकि बाद में वो आप पहले पैसा नहीं मिला था क्योंकि आगे मजदूरी पे बहुत ज़्यादा जाते थे कि क्योंकि पसल थी पसल में वो जमीन है तो जमीन में खाद बीज नहीं डालते थे सही ढंग से तो क्योंकि खाद लाते सरकार से तो वो बीज नहीं मिलता था ढंग से तो बीज लाते तो खाद नहीं मिलते और पति है तो मजदूरी ईट भट्टे के काम पर जाता है और जो कि वो पैसा मिलने के बाद में ईट भट्टे का काम पर नहीं जा रहा वो एक घर पर ही वो खेती का काम करने लग गया क्योंकि वो एक कुंटल अनाज बोएगा खेती में तो अभी वो पैसे मिलने के बाद में एक कुंटल अनाज पटके अगर सोयाबीन तुअर वगैरह लगा होगा तो वो दस कुंटल निकाल सकते थे पैसे क्योंकि ढंग खाद अच्छे नाक डालते थे बीज अच्छे डालते थे और वो दवाई अच्छी डालते थे आई मीन दिफरेंस ड्यूरिंग दिस फेज all of them moved back home they are all staying in their own house and not in the brick kiln we respect her feelings jc it's interesting um because um because the can program was canceled prematurely um it's hard to know if dignity and respect would stay and remain after um a if the pilot had been allowed to run its full course and go all the way to the end um i would like to think that it would and that people would have had the time and the ability to um build better lives for themselves that would have been able to continue post ubi um it's actually kind of interesting um i was challenged um just a couple of weeks ago so um a friend of mine asked like how do you find justice in the face of adversity and and that's a question that has been sitting with me now and something i've been really mulling over especially with um what has happened to us in ontario and with um this whole story of basic income and and it's interesting because like right now um there are there is a lot of activism that has uh, sort of sprung up in the face of this cancellation basic income groups um we have like a whole bunch of support groups on facebook and in our respective cities um where we have been banding together and making sure that not only are we all okay but that we're continuing to fight and continuing to promote awareness and raise awareness for that cause um despite that it is really hard um i've seen like the toll on these people's mental health and my own for for uh, to be quite honest has been really devastating um so it's hard to do that but i think that the more i think about that question um like justice in the face of adversity i think people i i'm starting to see how some of my friends are finding that justice in their own ways um in tremendous ways in whether like they are they're still keeping their housing they're still working they're still going back to school but even in small ways in any way that they can continue to advocate for this cause and i think that there's something really powerful and beautiful about that thanks <laughs> i hope that fully answers that Sabine has requested for 30 seconds. 
to add to the voice of the rest? I just want to answer the, um, answer the question for how, uh, how it's life between a uh, uh, mar married couple. Because I am not married, never ever in my life, so I'm, I don't know how it feels for, the, for you. But what I imagined in Germany, we are quite open society, so that everybody can get married or you can stay on your own. That's one side. And what are you, couples are doing? They are doing just the old uh, men, uh, men are shifts, like the man is doing the electrical and the technical side and the woman is doing the children's side. What are they doing if they have any, a really unconditional basic income? They, in this experiment, some married couple are telling that they are changing rules. It was very hard to them to believe that they really can discuss with each other, really going into discussions, what's life like, I'm a couple, with children or just being on work. I can't tell what's really going on with them after that year and when the experiment ends. But I'm hopefully, they are really becoming to some th yeah, to some change in their life, which, which, which makes them in a sort of becoming freedom. This is another one questions over there, but I think the UBI is not a freedom answer, it's a peace answer. And that's quite, it's really different to me. Thank you. Um, we are time bird and we are going to close the session. And before we close, I'd just like to remind all of us that, like Danny said, UBI is a baby and we don't expect it to run. We have so much still in our hands. We have a lot of considerations to think through, cultural context, period of delivering a UBI, what we want to impact, who else we need on the table, and at the end of it all, there is still hope. When we are treating UBI recipients, and when we are talking about them, let's not treat them as stones. If you have a job today, and you lose your job, life will not be the same. We should expect the same of UBI recipients, that in life, you go through experiences, and you have to adjust to every experience that you go through. This should not make us say that UBI is the worst thing because people will be worse off than they started. Experiences are different, and changes will always destabilize the status quo. Thank you all. Have a blessed evening.